uh, in this video we'll discuss uh, rather continue the discussion on the complex scalar field so we saw that the lagrangian associated to the complex scalar field was of the form of this form this was the lagrangian associated to the complex scalar field and then we saw that there are two fields that is phi and phi star and similarly these two degrees of freedom could also be captured by uh, decomposing the field psi into the form of 1 over root 2 psi 1 phi 1 plus i phi 2 so this kind of a decomposition uh, and uh, and phi star the field phi star will be simply uh, phi this field the conjugate of this field so i will get a minus sign so this kind of a decomposition uh, was uh, helped us to represent a complex uh, klein gordon field uh, in terms of two real uh, scalar uh, klein gordon field or real scalar fields phi 1 and phi 2 so this also helped us to write phi in terms of the operators where we just used the operator representation of these phi 1 and phi 2 and identified that uh, the creation annihilation operator uh, they of the field phi 1 and phi 2 they add up to create new creation and annihilation operator so uh, with these uh, things we saw that so uh, so phi i of x where i can take 1 or 2 uh, was of the form of this was the form and then i had 1 over uh, 2 omega p and this part was a i p uh, e power minus i p dot x so this is in heisenberg picture and plus a i p dagger e power i p dot x so this was the uh, real field uh, expression for phi 1 and phi 2 and then we saw that uh, then we saw that uh, that a i p uh, this a i p uh, if i write uh, so a 1 p plus iota a 2 p uh, is c p which was a uh, creation uh, which was an annihilation operator now that can be seen because when we put the expression here and here uh, we will uh, get this phi so uh, we also saw that the hamiltonian can be written as sum of these two hamiltonians uh, this is the Hamiltonian for the real scalar field. This is the Hamiltonian for another real scalar field. Now you see, we can use the creation annihilation operator of real scalar fields and we can write the Hamiltonian because Hamiltonian of a real scalar field uh, is of the form of uh, dq p over 2 pi q omega p a 1 p a i p dagger a i p. So I can plug the Hamiltonians here and then i can add these two hamiltonians like this so here uh, here the p1 is actually 1p i have uh, uh, written the notation in a wrong way uh, so this is simply the hamiltonian addition but now uh, what we can uh, do is we know that a1p and a2p and a1p dagger and a2p dagger they are related to the creation annihilation operator of the complex klein gordon field because uh, because of particularly this uh, relation here this phi this relation that we have here so a1p and a2 uh, these operators are related in this form this also we saw in the previous video that i have written so cp is written in this form and dp dagger is written in this form from this we can obtain cp dagger and dp so finally we can solve uh, for a1p and a2p and a1p dagger and a2p dagger in terms of cp cp dagger dp dp dagger so if we plug that form here and then what we remember is that uh, this hamiltonian h must be uh, normal ordered uh, which means that uh, which means that uh, which means that uh, the creation operators should be to the uh, left side uh, leftmost side and the annihilation operator to the extreme rightmost side if we do that then we can see that uh, we can directly use this summation of two hamiltonians to arrive at a final form of the hamiltonian and this was the final form of the hamiltonian so you see it is exactly similar to the uh, form of real scalar field but uh, here we have this is a number operator corresponding to the complex uh, scalar field phi and this is corresponding to the uh, phi star so we have sum of two number operators now uh, what we can do further is that 
we can uh, uh, do the entire uh, fact that uh, like if we act with a or if we act with a dagger operator on the zero state we will get new states that we discussed in case of uh, the scalar uh, real scalar field but now before uh, going the, uh, to that part what we will discuss is that uh, the symmetry associated the u1 symmetry so the point is phi can make a transition of this kind for a, a small parameter theta and phi star can make a transition of this point and then uh, in the previous uh, video we saw that this transitions gives rise to uh, uh, they give rise to the uh, the symmetries the conserved currents by using the noether's uh, theorem and the final form of conserved current also we derived in the previous video so the conserved charge is simply such an integral uh, and then we can put the value here and now we know the operator form of phi and uh, this conjugate momentum and so finally we can write this entire thing in this form here so we see that uh, this is uh, this is the this is a particular operator which is a symmetry of this uh, particular field theory so this oper this this is a conserved charge and this is a conserved current so conserved charge means this operator actually will uh, the commutator of this operator with the hamiltonian will be evaluated to zero so now let us see the action of this particular operator in various states that our theory will create uh, particularly in the same way using the creation and the annihilation operators so you see we define the vacuum state now now that we have two annihilation operator we have two annihilation operator because we have two kinds of fields so we define the vacuum as a state such that if we act with any of the annihilation operator it gives a zero so this this is a vacuum state and this is the zero of the vector space and this happens for all the momentum this is the three momentum the creation annihilation operators are always characterized by the three momentum so if we make such a definition automatically we see that if we act with the hamiltonian on the vacuum state it is zero if we act with the charge on the vacuum state so you see i have already uh, i am already using the name charge operator for this q we will see why this is called the charge operator so if we act with the charge operator on the vacuum state we will see that it will uh, be zero because of uh, this particular uh, boxed property so uh, this is the definition of the vacuum state now what we consider is we consider uh, a particular commutation relation of this kind so this is the charge operator and this is the creation operator ck so now uh, the charge operator inside its integrand has such a form now uh, the commutation relation can be worked out because ck will commute with all of the d's they will uh, they will just cancel off but ck will not commute with uh, ck dagger will not commute with this particular cp so i will get this minus this term now i can use a delta function uh, because uh, if i if i move this uh, ck cp here and then i use uh, the delta function then we can see that uh, the entire commutation relation will be reduced to this particular form minus this thing so uh, so i hope uh, this is clear so what we are doing is uh, we are uh, let's see uh, what we are doing is we are trying to uh, we are trying to calculate this commutation relation here and uh, cp dagger if i bring out so this can jump here because they both commute so inside i will have uh, cp ck dagger uh, minus uh, ck cp and this entire thing is a delta function so in actually what i will finally get is uh, i will get cp dagger times uh, i will get cp dagger times the commutation of uh, cp comma ck dagger Uh, now uh, the commutation of cp ck dagger uh, is of the form of this delta function here so this is the final uh, thing but now there is an integral over the p part there is an integral over the p part so the p will take the value of k and the integration will collapse so i will get ck dagger here so this is the commutation with ck dagger similarly we can do with dk dagger to get minus dk dagger because you see for uh, for the d part i already have a minus sign associated here 
so so we get these two commutation relations here and now we look what we do is we act with a creation operator on vacuum so uh, acting with a creation of operator on vacuum gives gives rise to single particle states with momentum k and with energy omega k which is such that omega k square is momentum k dot k uh, plus m square so uh, we act the charge operator on a single particle state we see that we finally get this where we use the property of this commutation relation now we again act with the charge operator on a single particle state but this is coming from the creation operator d but here we see that we are getting a minus sign so both both the creation operator c and d they are giving a single particle state but they have opposite charges so in uh, in that notion this is called the charge operator because we see they they are single particle state now this is also a single particle state this is also a single particle state but the charge of these two states are different so hence we see that there are two different kind of particles that are emerging uh, they are emerging naturally from our theory we are getting uh, one particle uh, if we call this as particle this we can interpret as an anti particle with a negative charge and this is having a positive charge so the nature of this charges are not clear i mean what this charges are these are not necessarily the electrical charges but we see there is some property of charge which is coming from the uh, symmetry of noether current uh, or the symmetry associated to this u1 uh, transformation so um, so that's all for this video in this video we discussed this charge operators and how they appear naturally as a uh, as a consequence of uh, noether's theorem uh, so that's all